So if you're looking to build a real-time sync between Bubble and Salesforce, I've got you covered. I will show you how to bring data from a Bubble database into Salesforce. By the end of this video, you will know how to sync user data from Bubble with a contact in Salesforce, how to map custom fields from Bubble to custom fields in Salesforce, and a basic understanding of how to build plugins in Bubble. Before we get started with building the integration, let's showcase how this integration works. We start with a record inside of Bubble. This is inside the admin dashboard, but the record can be created or updated anywhere in the app. We can create a record, populate the necessary data, and save. This is then brought over to Salesforce with the contact data populated. Now that we understand what we are building, let's get into the requirements. We will need to have Salesforce Enterprise to have access to the API, as well as any paid version of Bubble. Now that you understand what tools and plans are needed, we are going to configure the Bubble database, set up Salesforce with the necessary fields, add a Salesforce integration user for authentication, build a Bubble plugin, add the plugin to a backend workflow, and test and confirm the integration. To get started, let's configure our Bubble app. We can start by creating an app, going to the Data tab, I'm going to add some basic fields I would like to capture from a user. These are as follows. First name, last name, marketing opt out, mailing address, birthday, and the bubble created date. Now that the data model is complete, we need to switch over to Salesforce to mirror the data model. We will be using the following mapping document to bring data over. Some of these fields are standard on the contact. Other fields will need to be created. The most important field on this is the bubble ID. To create this in Salesforce, we will want a text field marked as an external ID. We want to make this field unique, but not required. Take the maximum field length and save. This field will allow us to update existing records in Salesforce from Bubble once the relationship is established. We also want to create a Bubble create a date field as a date time to bring over when the record was first created. Every other field is a standard field in Salesforce. Any additional fields in your process can be created here. Now that the data model is configured, we need a way of communicating between the two systems. We can use integration users inside of Salesforce to set up the authentication. This is a great way of authenticating third-party systems and sectioning access only to this system. We can create an integration user by going to Setup, Users, and New User. We need to give it a name, username, and email, as well as select the integration user license, then we can save. We will see an email that can be used to set the password for this user. Next, we will want to grant permissions so the integration user can see the data in Salesforce. Salesforce data access is given explicitly through permission sets. We can go to permission sets and setup, then create a new permission set, bubble integration. We need to set the license as Salesforce API integration. Then we can go to the contact permissions and add create, update, edit, and view all permissions as well as give field level security to the fields inside the mapping document. Assign this permission set to the integration user and we're almost ready to go. The final thing we need is a security token to enable API access. We can get this by going to login access policy under setup, clicking the administrators can log in as any user box, then log in as the user, go to my settings, reset my security token and reset the security token. This will send an email to the address that was used when the integration user was initially created. Copy this token down and save it for later. Now that we have everything set up, it's time to make the magic happen. We can use Bubble plugins to write custom JavaScript for our Bubble app. This will allow us to build the Salesforce integration to our specification. But before we get into that, if you are enjoying this video, please subscribe. It helps the channel out and lets me know to make more videos just like this. Inside of the Bubble homepage, we can make a new plugin. We can call this Salesforce integration and set a category. I like data things. We will use actions to store a step that will later be used in our workflow. We can create an action and give it a name like create contact Salesforce. Then we can set the action type as server side, this is important, and the category as data things. We can use fields as a way of passing data from our Bubble application to the plugin. We can create the field user to pass in the user object. 
This needs to be a dynamic value with the type of user. Additionally, we can use returned values as a way of passing our data from the plugin to further steps down in our workflow. Let's create the following fields. Properties, which will store data about the object. Success, which will let us know if the contact was inserted correctly and error message, which will contain information in case there is an error. Now that the configuration for the plugin is complete, let's add some simple code that will allow us to understand the shape of the data inside of Bubble. We can use the following code to understand what data is being passed to our plugin. But to use this code, we need to add it to our app. We can do so under the Settings tab and set the testing app to the ID of our Bubble application. We also want to submit the ID of the application and press Authorize. Now, we can go back to our app, go to the Plugin tab, and see the plugin installed. We use database triggers to run when a record in Bubble is updated. First, let's enable backend workflows. Then, we can use a database trigger to perform an action when a record in Bubble is created or updated. To create a database trigger, we need to go to the Workflow tab in the app, search for Backend Workflows, select the type new database trigger event, give an event name sync user with Salesforce, select type user, and select event color of blue. Now it's time to add actions to your workflow. Click on the newly created workflow and make step one of your plugin action create contact Salesforce and make step two an email with the body being the properties of the user from step one. Now we can go to data, app data, and edit a record and save you should receive an email with properties like so. We can use this JSON text to understand how to access data from the user value. We can use the dot notation to access this data inside the plugin editor. For example, this expression here will output the following string. We can also check the debug logs to confirm that the plugin has ran. Inside the logs section, we can go to the server logs tab, click show advanced and check the following settings plugin server-side output, and plugin server-side error. After searching for logs, we can see the results of the plugin running. Now that we understand how to access and read the data inside Bubble, let's move to integrating this with Salesforce. We need to add the integration user's credentials inside our plugin code. We can use keys inside our plugin to share this data between multiple plugin actions. To create keys, go to the Shared tab inside of the Plugin Editor and find the Additional Keys section. Here, we will want to make the following keys to store the necessary data. Salesforce username, Salesforce password, SF token, and SF URL. We also want all of these keys to have a type of private. Inside the action, we can now access these values. There is a window inside the app that allows for users to input these values. Now, let's connect the plugin to Salesforce. We will be using the popular JavaScript library JSForce to streamline our API calls. We can check the box to confirm that the plugin will use node modules, then add the dependency of JSForce. Now, we can instantiate JSForce with our logging credentials. We can make the function async, then instantiate the function as follows. This will import the JSForce library, then create a connection to the Salesforce login URL. This will be login.salesforce or test.salesforce, depending on if you are connecting to a production or sandbox environment respectively. Next, we want to authenticate with Salesforce using our credentials. We can use the following code to perform this. We pass in the username for the username field and the password and access token concatenated for the password. We can then perform additional operations on this connection using the then operation in a JavaScript promise. Finally, let's showcase how to call Salesforce data. We can use the find method to run a SQL query against our Salesforce data, returning any data found. Let's run the following query. Then let's create a variable output at the top of the file, assign the contact records to the output, and return the json.stringify output in our properties file. Inside our app, we can go to the plugin settings, fill our keys using the data from Salesforce, and edit and save a record. This will result in an email showing a list of contacts retrieved from Salesforce. Keep in mind, we need to change a value of the field to trigger the workflow. In this case, I am adding a space to the name. Now that the connection between the two systems is established, let's map the fields between the two systems. First, let's create variables that we can assign to use as outputs for reading the data outside the plugin. Then, we can map text fields like first name, last name, etc. using the dot notation. 
Let's create an object fields and map the text fields accordingly. Next, let's map out the Boolean fields like marketing opt-out. While we can use the same mapping as before, Bubble has a weird behavior. False values are not included in the data inside the plugin. In other words, if a user opts out of marketing, mapping fields directly will work as expected. If a user then decides they want to receive marketing emails, the value will not carry over into the plugin. Thus, on the Salesforce side, it will be as if the user never opted into marketing again. To remedy this, we can assign the variable as an expression to see if it is undefined, then assign to the fields function. For date and date time fields, we can map the values as expected. Because the created date field inside of Bubble has a space, we need to use the bracket notation to access the property. And finally, for address fields, we can map like so. Then we can upsert the contact record into Salesforce. Using the upsert function, we can match the update against the bubble ID, so future updates will use the created record and not create duplicates. We can use the following, where we specify the Salesforce object, then use the upsert function with the fields and the external ID specified. We can then write an error message if the callout is not successful. Otherwise, mark the callout as a success. We can also catch any authentication errors and write the error message as well. Now, when we update and save a record inside the Bubble Editor, the data will be brought over from Bubble to Salesforce. And while it would be nice to assume that the integration will function perfectly every time, sometimes it's better to plan for a rainy day. Many of the objects we created initially can be used to inform users if there is an error. We can leverage the variables and email function created earlier to create the error logging system. Using the email action, we can create a new workflow step. We can have a subject email target and use merge fields from the previous workflow step to add data from our Salesforce plugin. Finally, we can trigger this workflow when success equals false, so the error email is only sent when there is an error. Once we are happy with the plugin functionality, we can publish the plugin to make it available for our production app. Let's go to the Settings tab in our plugin and submit a new version. We can give it a nice description and save. We will then need to install this plugin inside our app. Let's go to the Plugins tab inside of our app and add a plugin. We can immediately see the plugin we created. Let's install this plugin, then update our workflows to include the action from the new plugin. And that's everything you need to build an integration with Bubble and Salesforce.